Welcome to ASFOB Tutoring. In this video, we will go over 15 questions on Army Aviation Information for the SIFT test. To practice more, download the SIFT Tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Question 1. What is the primary principle to counteract the main rotor torque with notor? A. Coanda effect. B. Venturi effect. C. Induced drag. D. Ground effect. The answer is A. The notor, NO tail rotor, system counteracts main rotor torque by using the coanda effect, answer A. Air is expelled from slots along the tail boom, creating a low pressure area that helps control yaw. This eliminates the need for a traditional tail rotor. The other options, such as the venturi effect, induced drag, and ground effect, are unrelated to this mechanism. Question 2. What are the four elements of risk management? A. Pilot, aircraft, environment, and external pressures. B. Flight envelope, aircraft, environment, and internal pressure. C. Pilot, drag, lift, and external pressures. D. Pilot, aircraft, environment, and altimeter. The answer is A. The four elements of risk management are pilot, aircraft, environment, and external pressures. These represent critical factors in flight safety. The pilot's skills and condition, aircraft performance, environmental conditions like weather, and external pressures, for example, time constraints or mission demands, all influence decision-making and risk during a flight. The other options contain incorrect or irrelevant elements like drag, lift, or altimeter. Question 3. What is the preferred method of ground movement for a helicopter on airports? A. Ground taxi. B. Air taxi. C. Ground movement. D. Uber taxi. The answer is B. The preferred method of ground movement for a helicopter at airports is air taxi. Air taxiing involves flying at a low altitude, usually below 100 feet, while maintaining a slow speed, allowing the helicopter to efficiently and safely navigate around the airport. Ground taxiing, A, involves moving on the ground, but air taxiing is faster and more common for helicopters. Question 4. Helicopters experience effective translational lift while transitioning to forward flight at approximately how many knots? A. 16 to 84. B. 16 to 24. C. 25 to 75. D. 24 to 78. The answer is B. Helicopters experience effective translational lift, ETL, during the transition to forward flight at approximately 16 to 24 knots. ETL occurs when the rotor system moves into undisturbed air, increasing lift and efficiency. At this speed range, the rotor blades are less affected by the rotor's downwash, allowing for smoother and more efficient lift production during forward flight. Question 5. When a helicopter is descending at more than 300 FPM, has 20 to 100% power, and an airspeed less than effective translational lift, what aerodynamic condition can occur? A. Settling with power. B. Helicopter crash. C. Hard landing. D. Stall. The answer is A. The aerodynamic condition described is settling with power. This occurs when a helicopter descends at more than 300 feet per minute with 20 to 100% power and airspeed below effective translational lift. The helicopter enters its own downwash, losing lift and control despite sufficient engine power. It's also known as vortex ring state. The other options are incorrect or unrelated. Question 6. Driven region. A. Has the effect of slowing the rotor's spin. B. Has the effect of speeding up the rotor's spin. C. Is the area of the blades where the autorotative force acts. D. None of the above. The answer is A. The driven region is the part of the helicopter rotor blade where airflow opposes the rotation, creating drag and slowing the rotor's spin. In autorotation, 
This region typically lies at the outer portion of the blades and is balanced by the driving region, which provides the force to maintain rotor speed. The other options describe different rotor blade regions. Question 7. While transitioning to forward flight at about 16 to 24 knots, the helicopter goes through a effective translational lift, b effective dissymmetry of lift, c effective induced lift, d effective translational thrust. The answer is a. While transitioning to forward flight at about 16 to 24 knots, the helicopter experiences effective translational lift, ETL. ETL occurs when the helicopter moves into undisturbed air, allowing the rotor system to produce more lift with less induced drag. This improves overall efficiency and lift production. The other terms like dissymmetry of lift, induced lift, and translational thrust describe different aerodynamic phenomena. Question 8. When a force is applied to one side of a spinning object, an action occurs approximately 90 degrees in the direction of rotation from the point where the force is applied. The action is called a. Gyroscopic force. b. Gyroscopic precession. c. Gyroscopic effect. d. Gyroscopic action. The answer is b. The action described is called gyroscopic precession. This phenomenon occurs when a force is applied to a spinning object, like a helicopter rotor, causing a reaction approximately 90 degrees later in the direction of rotation. Gyroscopic precession is a key factor in controlling a helicopter's movement, influencing how the rotor blades respond to control inputs. The other terms are incorrect or less specific. Question 9. When the helicopter is in the state of hover, a. Lift is a little more than the weight. b. The resultant lift is exactly equal to the weight. c. Thrust is a little less than drag. d. Lift and thrust are a little greater than weight and drag. The answer is b. When a helicopter is in a hover, the resultant lift is exactly equal to the weight. In this state, the helicopter remains stationary because the lift generated by the rotor blades perfectly balances the weight, and thrust equals drag, resulting in no vertical or horizontal movement. The other options describe conditions that would cause the helicopter to ascend, descend, or move. Question 10. Induced flow or downwash is a. The flow of air going down through the rotors. b. The flow of air going upward through the rotors causes the aircraft to move downward. c. The flow of air through the rotor blades. d. Resultant airflow through any rotor system. The answer is a. Induced flow, also known as downwash, is the flow of air going down through the rotors. This downward flow of air is generated by the rotor blades during lift production, especially noticeable during hover and slow flight. It is a key factor in helicopter aerodynamics, affecting lift and performance. The other options are less specific or incorrect descriptions of the airflow. Question 11. What is the increased efficiency of the rotor disc caused by the interference of the airflow when near the ground? A. Coriolis effect. B. Transverse flow effect. C. Out of ground effect. D. In ground effect. Ig. The answer is D. The increased efficiency of the rotor disc caused by the interference of airflow when near the ground is known as in ground effect. Ig. This phenomenon occurs when a helicopter operates close to the ground, resulting in reduced induced drag and increased lift due to the ground's influence on the rotor's downwash. It allows helicopters to achieve better performance during takeoff and landing. The other options do not accurately describe this effect. Question 12. In forward flight, the tail rotor continues to push to the right, and the helicopter makes a small angle with the wind and the rotors are level and the slip ball is in the middle. This is known as the A. Pendular action. B. Inherent side slip. C. Lateral side slip. D. Slip. The answer is B. In forward flight, 
when the tail rotor continues to push to the right and the helicopter makes a small angle with the wind while the rotors are level and the slip ball is centered, this is known as inherent side slip. This condition arises due to the rotor's thrust vector and the aerodynamic forces acting on the helicopter, causing a slight yaw to one side. The other options describe different aerodynamic phenomena or actions. Question 13. Mean camber line is a. A line along which there is no magnetic variation. b. The imaginary line about which the rotor rotates. c. A line is drawn halfway between the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil. d. A straight line intersecting the leading and trailing edges of the airfoil. The answer is c. The mean camber line is a line drawn halfway between the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil. This line represents the average curvature of the airfoil and is crucial for analyzing lift characteristics. It helps in understanding how the airfoil generates lift as air flows over it. The other options describe different aspects of aerodynamics or airfoil geometry. Question 14. Out of ground effect cushion of air between the helicopter and the ground is gone above IGE altitude. As a result, more power is needed to hover slash move up. This is called a Coriolis effect, b transverse flow effect, c out of ground effect, d in ground effect, ig. The answer is c. The condition described, where the cushion of air between the helicopter and the ground is lost above IGE altitude, requiring more power to hover or move up, is called out of ground effect. In this state, the helicopter no longer benefits from the increased lift and reduced induced drag provided by the ground's influence, leading to a greater power requirement for sustained flight. The other options do not accurately describe this phenomenon. Question 15. Since the fuselage of the helicopter, with a single main rotor, is suspended from a single point and has considerable mass, it is free to oscillate either longitudinally or laterally in the same way as a pendulum. This behavior is called a Coriolis effect, b pendular action, c dynamic rollover, d deviation. The answer is b. This behavior, where the fuselage of the helicopter is suspended from a single point and can oscillate longitudinally or laterally like a pendulum, is called pendular action. This oscillation occurs due to the helicopter's mass and the way it is supported allowing it to respond dynamically to changes in motion and external forces. The other options refer to different aerodynamic or flight phenomena. In this video, we will go over 15 questions on Army Aviation Information for the SIFT test.